Every once in a while, a video comes out that you just think cannot possibly be real. And today, we're going to talk about the Young Turks analysis of Kyle Rittenhouse versus Ashley Babbitt and how Tucker Carlson's position on both somehow denotes a level of hypocrisy on Tucker that is not present amongst the Young Turks. Now, when I saw this video, which by the way, credit to Devin Tracy, Atheism is Unstoppable, over on Censored and on Subscribestar, join up, he got booted from Patreon, still makes great content for letting me know about the existence of this video. I thought no way Anna Kasparian was going to say anything about falseness related to reporting related to Kyle Rittenhouse, but I was actually stunned. The audacity of Anna Kasparian is unparalleled because that's exactly what she did. That's exactly what the Young Turks did. And even throughout the course of their video where they condemned Tucker Carlson for allegedly lying about the Ashley Babbitt case and comparing it to the Rittenhouse case, they could not help themselves but lie about the Kyle Rittenhouse case. We're now three years away from the case actually happening. The videos were available day one and TYT is it's still lying about the case. It's amazing. And we're going to get into this. But before we get into that, we got to get into your internet security, which is why we are happy to be sponsored by Atlas VPN. I take internet privacy and security quite seriously, which is one of the reasons why I'm so happy to be partnered with Atlas VPN, which is a VPN developed and designed by cybersecurity experts. Atlas is more than just a VPN. It blocks ads and malware. And when you're searching something into Google, it will give you organic results, not altered by Google's algorithm just specifically for you. On top of that, as somebody who is absolutely in love with trashy reality shows, Atlas VPN can help me out because there's a lot of region locks when it comes to reality shows, so I can just switch my location, go to a different nation to get around the restrictions and locks that we have to deal with in the United States of America. Also, if you're abroad, you can switch your VPN to the United States to watch standard shows and whatnot that are available here. And the great thing about Atlas VPN is it's absolutely amazing price point you can get atlas premium for just a dollar 83 a month plus atlas is throwing in three months on top of that for free and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's absolutely no risk in this scenario so watch your trashy reality shows from the international view protect all of your devices from ads and malware get unlimited devices to be protected just a dollar 83 a month can't beat that deal 30-day free trial three extra months see the pinned comment and the top of the description that's atlas vpn so for those of you who are unaware recently kevin mccarthy made available to tucker carlson security tapes related to the january 6th incident which as we all know is the darkest day in american history where were you january 6th i was in a car dealership trying to buy a car and the guy tried to tell me at that car dealership that frame damage which was on the carfax report was not serious damage and then i was angry i was furious i was like Frame damage is serious, but then I looked up and realized it wasn't because what I saw on the TV screen was our democracy getting frame damage. Democracy the world over getting frame damage. Where were you January 6th? I was at a car dealership. Where, 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 where were you? There were many mysteries we could not solve. Among them, unfortunately, is the shooting of Ashley Babbitt. From the evidence we have, the publicly available evidence, it seems clear that Babbitt was murdered by a Capitol Hill police officer called Michael Byrd. Ashley Babbitt was unarmed. She was shorter in stature than average. She posed no conceivable threat to anyone. But beyond that, we can only speculate about what happened. There were no security cameras near the speaker's lobby where Ashley Babbitt was killed. So what we ended up finding out through the course of this footage becoming available to Tucker Carlson was a bunch of different things that brings up issues, specifically with the prosecution of certain people who participated in the January 6th events. Specifically, one of the things that people are highlighting is the QAnon shaman guy who ended up pleading guilty to a bunch of different charges. However, what we discovered is that there were some security tapes available that were not disclosed to his defense team and that obviously is a Brady violation and those things should have been made available and maybe that could possibly lead to aiding in his appeal 
and whatnot. However, Tucker Carlson makes it clear right there that he is upset that there isn't security footage of what happened to Ashley Babbitt, even though, as we all know, we have cell phone video. Now, I do want to point out that Tucker Carlson's premise that Ashley Babbitt for sure was murdered by a Capitol Police officer is actually not backed up by reality, and it's not something that I agree with. While I do believe that there are questions about whether or not this shooting was legitimate, and there's definitely hypocrisy amongst the left wing because they didn't want this officer identified immediately and they basically brushed this under the rug immediately which is not something they would do if the races were reversed in this scenario obviously you have a black officer shooting a white woman and that's something that the left is just totally okay with because of the political beliefs however you could make the case that it is a justifiable shooting it just would be nice if people treated this with the same level of scrutiny that they treated obvious cases where the person who was shot was definitely in the wrong because it's not a hundred percent obvious in the Babbitt case even though I think you could make a reasonable case so Tucker's assertion that it was an outright murder I actually don't believe and if you don't like that that's totally fine but you're just wrong it's way more ambiguous than you would say in an effort to rewrite what actually occurred on January 6th Tucker Carlson paints Capitol rioter Ashley Babbitt as an innocent and petite woman who was unjustly shot and killed by a Capitol Police officer, even as a violent riot was taking place right before the shooting. Now, why don't we actually take a look at what the scene looked like? And then I'm gonna break apart Tucker Carlson's ridiculous hypocritical argument. Let's watch. So I'm actually not going to show much more of this video. I will describe to you what happens because I don't want to show you a clip of somebody being killed on camera. That's not something that I like to do on this channel, but I will link the Young Turks video, which they show the full thing in the description of this if you want to watch it. But essentially what you can see from this video, and you can hear it, is that the security guard or the Capitol Police officer who's in a suit is holding a firearm. Now, while this is happening, people who I would describe as rioters at this point are trying to break the glass window of this door which is barricaded and ultimately what will end up happening is that Ashley Babbitt will climb through the window where she will be shot by this officer off to the side. Now the Young Turks tries to make it obvious that this was known by Babbitt and absolutely everyone that this person had a gun but you could just hear how loud it is and even though the person saying there's a gun is closer to the camera so he comes in louder you can understand how people likely didn't know and Babbitt likely didn't know that this person who's off to the side had a firearm. Okay, so since Tucker Carlson had difficulty, you know, investigating what happened to Ashley Babbitt, I'll help him out. Uh, you see an individual holding a gun, you hear the rioters say repeatedly, he's got a gun, he's got a gun, he's got a gun. And Ashley Babbitt decided to attempt to crawl through that, you know, broken glass in the door to get to. I'm guessing elected officials who they were targeting uh, through this riot. So that's what happened, Tucker. Okay, I hope you understand now since you can clearly see it with your own two eyes. So again, you see Anna Kasparian framing it as everybody could hear that this person had a gun and then Ashley Babbitt ignored that specific warning and crawled through what Anna Kasparian can't seem to describe as a window. She's like a glass in part of a door. What even is that? Because for some reason she's at a loss for words and she's saying it very bluntly. And I just want to point out that none of this lack of skepticism would be in play if the situation was reversed in terms of political beliefs or in terms of the race of the person shot and the race of the officer doing the shooting. Now, you could make the case, and I think it's not unreasonable to make the case, that Babbitt trying to climb through a window could have easily been pushed back by this person and him shooting her from the side seems to be a little bit off. Also, this being said, they are very close to where the representatives are, so you could also make the case, and this is one of the reasons why I just don't agree with the claim that it's an outright murder, that they're getting way too close to the elected representatives, and because they're smashing windows, they are presenting a threat, even though the Young Turks is going to amplify their level of threat in order to excuse this, which is something that they would never do again if the races were reversed or if the political ideologies were reversed. 
first. Yeah, by the way, he has all the tapes. It's of not, course. It's not like he didn't see that, he did see that and decided to lie about it anyway, because that's what he does. So Jenk says that Tucker lied about this, but obviously Tucker has shown Ashley Babbitt being shot on his program before what he said specifically and again the reason we have to go specific is because the young turks are going to try to broaden it out in order to distract you from the specifics was that they don't have security tapes of this security tapes being the key phrase right there so they don't have any new footage from new angles that might show by the way representatives way closer to where these people are and thus present more danger and thus actually back up the officer much more so did they look like people peaceful sightseers that Tucker Carlson described yesterday. So last night he's like, oh yeah, they're just walking around, they're just sightseeing there and they're very orderly and calm and peaceful. Did they, is that what that tape looked like to you guys? Hmm. Now, why did they, those uh, people think that the door was barricaded? Why did they think that there was a policeman with a gun? Why did they think that uh, all this was happening? Did it not occur to them that when they chanted hang Mike Pence, they hang Mike Pence, and they were trying to break down the door very violently to get to the politicians inside, that, they, that the police there might have um, perceived a threat. I mean, the absolute audacity of Jank Uger of the Young Turks or anyone in the left-wing media to say, oh, here's some pockets of violence that occurred, therefore there were no people who were acting more like sightseers is absurd and ridiculous. Remember this famous image from the Black Lives Matter riots where this guy is standing in front of a burning building during a full-scale riot and they have the headline, fiery but mostly peaceful. Yes, we understand that that some people were committing crimes, some people were committing vandalism, some people were threatening elected representatives on January 6th. However, the prosecutions, a lot of them, the bulk of them are for trespassing, and there were some people, undoubtedly, who, because the officers had to do a strategic retreat or whatever, were kind of funneled through the Capitol building. They didn't commit any additional crimes beyond trespassing, and you could argue that the trespassing was completely undercut, and by the way, in certain cases, it was completely undercut by the officers funneling them in there. And yeah, so these people would not be the sightseers. These people would be the vandals and vagrants and those people destroying property in the Capitol building. I don't understand. Well, actually, I do understand why Jank is failing to draw the delineation because he doesn't care about the delineation when it comes to his political opponents. Most destructive riots in American history, that's mostly peaceful. We have a study that shows that three or four people gathered a hundred times at noon on a Wednesday afternoon and that didn't turn into a riot so we're going to ignore the thousands of people rioting in all these major cities across the country 600 total riots within a three-month span no no big deal don't worry about it 200 riots in portland don't worry about that because again we had a bake sale that was called the black lives matter bake sale where eight people attended and uh they, that didn't break out in a riot and we count that as equivalent to other protests which had much more people caused much more damage and and we're actually at nighttime. Mm. Okay, you know when I perceive a threat? When someone starts to chant about an execution of a guy they're trying to get to. If that's not a perceived threat, literally nothing is. So I just wanna point out that the people who are chanting to kill Mike Pence or anybody on January 6th are 100% in the wrong. But I also wanna point out, and this should be made abundantly clear by the fact that you didn't hear any of this in the footage that they just showed related to Ashley Babbitt, that what Jenk is talking about are completely different people. These were not the same people. So Jenk adding in that chanting to them is again, just trying to blur the delineations between the people and claim that they were all doing this, they were all guilty, therefore, therefore, it was all 100% justified. And by the way, this is totally unnecessary. You could see people smashing up these windows. And again, if elected representatives are really close nearby, you don't need to hear them threatening them or anything like that. You can make a reasonable assumption based on what's going on and the context of the situation that you're in that a use of force against these people is justified without the chance specifically that Jenks referring to that aren't there. So one of the things that really annoys me about this video, and it should annoy you,
you because it's an insult to your intelligence is that Jank is lying about stuff that doesn't need to be lied about. You don't need this qualification in order to have this be a justified case, but Jank doesn't want to make that argument. Instead, he wants to paint you as an absolute idiot. And again, we're not even to the juiciest part of this video. I mean, it's just laughable, the kinds of lies he tells, and also the selective application of the self-defense argument, Jank. Because in that case, Look, I would be terrified, right? You've got a violent mob coming after you. You're holding the gun for a while, indicating I will shoot <laughs> if you're gonna come for me. And it happened, of course, he opened fire as Ashley Babbitt was trying to get through the door. So oh, here we go. Anna Kasparian is about a school, Tucker Carlson and the right wing on their selective application of a self-defense argument. She's about to show your hypocrisy and you're going to get debunked by Anna Kasparian because you're selectively applying the self-defense argument in this case, according to Anna Kasparian. Now, I just want to point out that what the Capitol police officer is actually going to use as his defense, what's actually the justification, is a defense of other others not a specific self-defense the idea that this officer who is off to the side was in immediate mortal danger is just not true so Anna's already wrong in what she's talking about what the argument is is that this presents a giant threat and there's unknown about whether or not Babbitt had a weapon on her or anything like that she's crossing a barrier and he has to defend the elected representatives but Anna Kasparian is a little bit beneath the intellectual qualifications to make that delineation so we're going to set that aside and pretend like that's not dead on accurate, what I just said, and listen to Anna Kasparian's counter argument. Now, with that said, Tucker Carlson had no problem defending others when it came to the notion of self-defense. Let me give you an example. Others, others, others. Why does Anna Kasparian talk like that? She's like, Tucker Carlson had no problem defending others when it came to self-defense. Anna. Just shut up and make your point. It's in the title of the video. You're going to compare this to Kyle Rittenhouse, and I'm going to laugh in your face as you do this. The legal matter, all that matters here is whether Kyle Rittenhouse reasonably believed that his life was in danger. And of course he believed that. Why wouldn't he? You would believe that too if you were him. So I just want to do a quick, tiny correction of what Tucker Carlson said right there, because the issue at hand in the Rittenhouse case wasn't whether or not Kyle personally believed that he was in a dangerous situation or a deadly force situation. It's whether or not a reasonable person in Kyle Rittenhouse's circumstances would come to that same conclusion. It's a little bit of a delineation, but I think it's very important for you to understand. Another way to phrase it would be, is it reasonable for Kyle Rittenhouse? House to believe, not whether or not he reasonably believes. If you understand that delineation, then thank you so much for going down this very specific tiny correction so that we could be hyper specific in this situation because I'm obsessed with accuracy. Kyle Rittenhouse, self defense. The Capitol officer who opened fire on Ashley Babbitt as she was part of a violent crowd of people trying to get to elected officials not self-defense. And let me show you what happened uh, when Kyle Rittenhouse fired the first shots. Let's take a look. Rittenhouse walks towards a parking lot where cars are being vandalized. He passes Joseph Rosenbaum, who was fighting with the armed men at the gas station earlier. Rosenbaum now starts chasing Rittenhouse and throws a plastic bag that holds his belongings from the hospital. Close behind them, a man holds up a handgun and fires it. Then Rosenbaum lunges towards Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse fires four times. So I just want to point out that there is no similarity at all whatsoever between the Rittenhouse case as presented in this video and the Ashley Babbitt case as presented in this video. And actually, the video that the Young Turks showed really reduces the amount of danger that Kyle Rittenhouse was in and the amount of malice that Joseph Rosenbaum was acting with. Because one of the things we found out through the aerial footage is that Joseph Rosenbaum actually arrived at the car dealership prior to Kyle Rittenhouse. So they were walking, Rosenbaum was behind him, but eventually they both start running and Rosenbaum gets ahead of Rittenhouse, then hides behind a vehicle, again, as seen with this aerial footage, then tries to ambush Kyle Rittenhouse. So when they're 
running at this point, this is when Rosenbaum had already jumped from behind a vehicle and started pursuing Kyle Rittenhouse. And what the Young Turks don't really tell you is that Rosenbaum lunged for Kyle Rittenhouse's gun and DNA evidence shows that his hand was on Rittenhouse's firearm. So he was clearly moving to take the firearm from Kyle Rittenhouse. None of these things are what happened in the Ashley Babbitt case. You have an officer on the side. It is doubtful on whether or not Babbitt even knew that officer was there because of the way that he was hiding. He fired on Babbitt as she crossed the threshold. So how these cases are comparable is kind of absurd to even make that argument. Also, one is a straight up self-defense. The other is a defense of others. Now, we've shown that video on the show before. I think the jury, uh, obviously the jury did believe that Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself. Someone opens fire, Rittenhouse is running away. He doesn't know who's opening fire. He doesn't know if he's being targeted. So yeah, I think you could justly say that Rittenhouse acted in self-defense in that moment. But you can't then turn around and argue that what happened to Ashley Babbitt was not an instance of a Capitol Police officer acting in self-defense. So Anna makes this point that you can't argue one but not the other. But again, I'll ask you, how are these cases even remotely similar? Even the laws that are applicable are completely different as one took place in Wisconsin and one took place in Washington, D.C. So there's nothing about these cases that are related at all in any way. There's a very, very violent crowd smashing the hell out of a barricaded door, chanting about how they're gonna murder the people inside. To say that that was not a threat is beyond insanity. Again, it insults your audience. You're, you think your audience can't figure out anything at all, Is the, the, every one of them is the least rational person you've ever met in your real life. You can't tell that that is a violent mob looking to do harm to the people inside. So what's funny about this is that Jank is saying all these things and he's like, oh, you must think your audience is as stupid as possible. But then of course he ends up doing this. Now remember, the cop isn't thinking if you come for me, his and the cops did not fire when they broke down the initial barricades, when they entered the building, this is the very inner sanctum of Congress. There's nowhere left to run. And he's firing to protect the legislators that the mob is saying out loud that they are going to murder. They're, I've never seen a more justifiable shooting in my life. But Kyle Rittenhouse had a plastic bag thrown at him. So he gets to murder someone and that's self-defense. So after Jenk lambasted Tucker Carlson for disrespecting his audience, saying that all this is obvious and available to you in the public, he then resets the narrative and says that Kyle Rittenhouse just murdered people because he had a plastic bag thrown at him. Again, all the information I presented about the ambush, about Rosenbaum getting his DNA on the handgun, was all available very early on in this case. It has been available since the trial with the overhead footage. So this information was public for all to see but Jank Uger and the Young Turks actually disrespect their audience they actually think you're stupid because they lied to you about this for years remember how many times Anna Kasparian talked about Kyle Rittenhouse committing the crime of crossing state lines wouldn't go out of his way to go to a protest who crossed state lines he drove from Illinois to Kenosha Wisconsin now again he drove from Illinois to Wisconsin it's not like he was in his front yard yeah. And he was approached by a group of individuals who posed an imminent threat to his life. He drove across state lines in a state that he doesn't even live in. Because obviously we're dealing with a 17 year old from out of state. And then he crossed state lines with it. He crossed state lines, meaning he traveled across state lines. He traveled there from out of state, who again, uh, traveled across state lines, so he did not cross state lines with an illegal gun. Now, of course, that wasn't even true in the first place, and even if it were true, that's not a crime on its own, and that doesn't undo the self-defense claim, but Anna Kasparian said that for well over a year. In fact, a year out, Anna Kasparian was claiming that Rosenbaum was being chased by Rittenhouse, despite the video of Rosenbaum chasing Kyle being available day one. There are multiple videos from that night. The first First video was Kyle Rittenhouse literally chasing a protester into a parking lot. And and by the way, just last thing, think about it from this perspective. Kyle Rittenhouse goes in with a weapon into the uh, protest. He points the he chases people with it. He points the weapon at someone. They then try to wrestle the weapon away because they have a loaded gun pointed at him, a loaded weapon at him, right? But for right wingers, that's not stand your ground. 
That's not self-defense. Even worse, Cenk Uger actually would throw out hypotheticals that would make Kyle Rittenhouse justified in his self-defense that were what actually happened. He said if somebody pointed a gun at him, he could understand Kyle shooting that person who pointed a gun at him, but that didn't happen, therefore Kyle Rittenhouse is guilty. Wait, so if you're on that jury and it turns out, hey, one of the guys pointed a uh, that Kyle Rittenhouse had not done anything, didn't start anything, and one of the guys in the in the crowd pointed a gun at his head, and then he turned around and actually defended himself. Then you should let him go. Then he's not guilty. That is actually self-defense. If that's what the evidence shows. So far, we have public evidence. It is not what it shows. It is not at all what it shows. But if you have magic evidence that we haven't seen, it's possible, show it to the jury, then we would be for justice. Now again, just like what I said about Rosenbaum chasing Kyle Rittenhouse, not Kyle chasing Rosenbaum, that Anna Kasparian got wrong for a year and had to embarrassingly apologize about, it was available day one, the video of Gage Grosskreutz pointing a firearm at Kyle Rittenhouse's head. He even admitted on the stand that he faked a surrender to Kyle Rittenhouse, then tried to draw on him, and that's when Kyle fired upon him, wounding him in his arm. So this was all available day one, but the Young Turks think you're so stupid that now almost three years later, Jank is still telling you that Kyle just murdered people because he had a plastic bag thrown in his direction. With your arms up in the air, he never fired, right? Correct. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. But that's the thing. This is a pattern of the Young Turks that we see time and time again. And the Ashley Babbitt case is far more ambiguous than other cases that the Young Turks have completely flipped on and said were unjustified despite overwhelming evidence. Obviously, Michael Brown case, amazing case where we had three different autopsies that show undoubtedly that Officer Darren Wilson told the truth and Michael Brown was in the wrong, the Young Turks will still say Michael Brown was murdered. I did a video on the Makia Bryant case where the cops show up makia bryant is holding a knife to another girl she's about to gut this girl the cop fires saving that girl in an instant and the young turks did a video about how makia bryant was this innocent angel she didn't do anything and the cop was obviously an evil white racist because he didn't let this one black girl kill another black girl now like i said you could have a reasonable good faith argument on why ashley babbitt was a threat and the shooting was justified but that argument is not something that's being put forward by the Young Turks. In fact, I think that Jenk doesn't really believe that it's justified because he has to make up and add in all these additional events that didn't have anything to do with this specific scenario, which really goes to show you that Jenk only cares about the political affiliation or the race of the person being shot, and that's how he determines the morality. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the Young Turks' insane comparison. Till next time.